right, hey, uh, welcome back uh, to the Sloppy Modeler, and if it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. Super happy to have you along today. Uh, this is just a short introductory video uh, of the uh, Bandai 144 scale Rise of Skywalker Millennium Falcon, and I'm going to add the word levitating in there. Uh, very excited about tackling this project. I think it's uh, frankly beyond my skill set, but we're going to give it a go, give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to put in uh, the video right here. All right, so this is a video from YouTube. Uh, Glenn Makes is the YouTube channel. And here is the, the minute long video of him putting together his floating Millennium Falcon. I don't think that's the Bandai kit. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think it's got quite the detail that the Bandai does. Uh, but then he did some amazing stuff with uh, the acrylics here and then uh, spraying up uh, the, the base that he did, uh, the sandscape and, and putting it all together. So uh, excellent job. And uh, hopefully if we can come near to this, I'll be a super happy camper. So uh, we will be back with you in a second. Uh, that is the video of the um, Millennium Falcon project uh, by Glenn Makes. And uh, that's on his YouTube channel and I'll include that in the uh, description. Uh, but uh, that is a very cool um, uh, very cool technical project very nicely done and I wanted to do something very very similar I don't think he did that with a Bandai kit it appears to me that that is one of the light up toys uh, that you can get uh, but I wanted to at least give it a shot uh, I'm gonna go a little bit forward with the um, go a little bit forward with the rise of Skywalker there's the scene at the end of the of the nine movie trilogy uh, 10 if you count the, the absolute uh, second best movie in the series, uh, Rogue One. But in the end of that, Rey is, is uh, uh, concealing the, the lightsabers of Luke and Leia uh, at the original um, Uncle Owen and Aunt uh, Beru's farm where Luke grew up. And she sinks them into the, uh, she sinks them into the uh, desert. Uh, there are a couple of scenes in New Hope, and then, of course, in that scene that show uh, the the farmstead, if you will. And the farmstead uh, has three major components. The first is a giant hole in the ground. Uh, that is where uh, the main garden area of Baru is. That uh, you look up and you've got it, they've got an evaporator in there and some other things. The second is the entrance, which is a, an igloo-shaped dome. And then the third, which I think is the garage where Luke is working on uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO. Uh, and that has, um, it's a sunken garage, of course, and it's got a, uh, a fanned out roof or ceiling, uh, almost like the top of a corn crib. Uh, if you're from the Midwest, you know what I'm talking about. So my thought is I want to do a levitating uh, Millennium Falcon. I'm going to use the Bandai 144th kit. And then I'm going to um, uh, do that onto a, a desert scape. I've never done a sand desert scape. I, I don't know what that's really like. But um, if you give me a second, I'll get set up and I'll show you kind of the progress I've already made. And I haven't even started on the, the kit itself. It's just on the base and I want to get this kind of locked down. We still got obviously some more stuff to do. But let me uh, cut to that and uh, we will be back with you in a second. All right, uh, so showing you the progress on the base and we'll introduce uh, the uh, kind of the game plan, hopefully, to get this figured out. <clears throat> so the uh, base <clears throat> is simply, uh, I picked up a, a tray and this is upside down. The tray is hollow underneath. Uh, but I liked this flared side and I think what I'm going to do is tape off this section here and leave that wood and then just do the sandscape on the top. And I might even lay in a styrene piece to differentiate that a little better. But we'll, we'll get to that uh, when we get to that. Uh, currently, what I've done so far is this is the submerged 
uh, electromagnetic piece that uh, allows for that levitation. And that's about a $60 uh, circuit board with the heavy magnets on it. And that is supposedly able to sustain um, about 1.2 kilograms or 2.4 pounds. I don't think, even though there's going to be a lot of lights in it, I don't think that that 144th kit weighs more than that. It's going to be close, but I think we'll be in good shape. This includes uh, some LED lights that were included with that. So what I did is I just basically took uh, this um, flat piece of, of plywood and these acrylic pieces here, cut them at an angle. I've got more work to do, but those light up in a blue uh, screen. I'm going to glue that down. That's a couple reasons. I don't want sand getting into that electromagnetic uh, uh, pulse generator. Uh, and it gives me a flat piece here that I can use and it gives me some uh, just some very cool stuff So that is the base in addition. I've got uh, this was part of an egg uh, Oh, what do they call them an egg? Um, an egg storage plastic container and I cut it off at the end and I'll have to do some work on that but that will get cut out like a door and that'll go in there I'm gonna sculpt in the the hole for where Baru lives, and then maybe over here do the garage with that just that submerged uh, cap. So we'll see. We'll see how that comes together. But that is kind of uh, the base uh, starting it. I'm gonna fill this in with uh, color changing wood filler. Um, that should just uh, basically sculpt in the the. The sand dunes if you will then I'll use uh, my toilet paper and paper and wood glue trick to give us a, a uniform base across all of this and then we'll start with the painting and then uh, after the painting I did pick up this fine buff ballast uh, which is um, crushed rock and stone for any scale so I have to uh, figure that out and, and, and That'll go over the whole thing, and I'm probably going to actually pick up a color more, couple more colors, a couple of darker ones to give kind of a three-color fade on that Desertscape after rewatching A New Hope. Uh, it's a lot darker than this, so we'll want to do that. Um, the kit in question, let me move this out of the way, is the Bandai 144 scale Millennium Falcon. Uh, the Rise of Skywalker, and it's got the round, uh, it's got the round uh, radar dish, and it's uh, the beat up version after uh, all of the movies and so forth, compared to the very clean um, uh, very clean version of and it's just plain solo. On the side here, it's got the rear view, side view, front view, and then it's got uh, multiple canopies, and we'll talk about that. It's got a cockpit, boarding ramp, landing gear, which I'm not going to use, uh, and then a main sensor rectenna. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, still back with you. Sorry about that. I thought uh, I thought my camera died, and it actually it was my other one. So uh, this has uh, canopies, the main sensor rectenna, heat exhaust vents. Uh, this kit can be bought with a separate kit for lighting up, but I'm not going to use the separate kit. And it's got some character parts to it. And this kind of gives you an overview of the top, each side, and the bottom and the base. Great kit if you want to build it just uh, by itself. I have ordered... Uh, I have ordered some aftermarket parts. And I'm not going to go through meet the parts. You guys have been through all of that as uh, multiple kits of this are online. First thing I ordered uh, is this uh, canopy set. This is vacuum formed. So this is the front cockpit and then the two gun ports top and bottom. And uh, uh, it also includes a mask set for that uh, to mask all of that off and then paint it the, the color. So that is one piece of aftermarket. Second piece of aftermarket are the Millennium Falcon grills, and uh, that uh, is hopefully going to add a significant amount of detail. I'm trying, and we'll talk about the lighting in a minute here, uh, I'm trying to see if I want to put lights underneath these. Uh, they had fans in the original one, in the studio model kit, to actually exhaust the heat coming off that rear engine lighting. 
Uh, we're not going to have that kind of heat, uh, but I think it would be cool to do red uh, red lights in that. We'll talk about the lighting in a second as we go into the plan. Uh, this is a Millennium Falcon a dedication plaque I picked up off of Green Strawberry. Um, just kind of cool, and we'll see if we use that at all. Might use it, might not, but uh, a very nice dedication plaque. Uh, and then this is the mask for the Bandai kit. So we've got mask there too, if I need to do that. And then finally, we've got all of the detail kits. Here's for the sides. Uh, there's uh, for the gunner panels. There's just some really nice panels here all throughout for doing that kit on the uh, Millennium Falcon. So um, regardless, those are the aftermarket details that'll go into this. Let's talk about the lighting for just a second, and then we will conclude. Um, lighting on the Millennium Falcon, and I watch, is, uh, watch uh, models by Chris, who built a uh, perfect grade, uh, 172nd scale, and then the uh, D'Agostino build he did, and did some significant customization for that. And as a result, I've been working on what I want to do for the lighting on this. First challenge is I want the lighting to be self-contained with a battery on the inside of it. So I've bought a lithium ion 1800 uh, milliamp batteries that I'm gonna put a charger onto them, a voltage up regulator to, to up those from 3.7 to five volt. And then um, uh, we're gonna use all SMDs and then some cob lighting. So hopefully I'll pull less than one amp throughout on this. But we'll have to see. But the lighting for the upper side is the two headlights here and then the cockpit. And that is about it for upper lighting. The lower light, I don't think I've got a photo of the lower piece. Um, we'll use the actual piece here. The lower hall has uh, two types of lights in it. There's a series of what are called landing lights. And I think they're these areas here four uh, on each side and then two on the back and those are white and we've got a plan for that and then there's supposed to be emergency red lighting I think there's two there and I think people have put like one in each of these corners same thing on the back so we will do uh, something with that emergency red lighting and then I believe that there's red lights all across the back of that and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that either uh, it will depend on how complicated the lighting kit gets. And there's a consideration of weight. Uh, by having this go at a certain, um, you know, I want to make sure that that magnet can support it. And I have that magnet clear over here uh, because if you put it close to anything else, it attracts and, and makes my tools hard to use. So, uh, that is the uh, plan for the Millennium Falcon 144th Bandai Rise of Skywalker Levitating Millennium Falcon. And uh, we shall see how it comes together. But uh, pretty pleased with at least getting the base shaped up. And uh, from there we will we'll figure that out as we go. Um, if you do like what you see during this build series, I would really appreciate a like, a subscription, uh, and a, uh, a share if you like, and even... Um, you know, some comments would be good, uh, especially going into this. There's just some very cool stuff. And I hope you enjoyed uh, Glenn Make's version. Uh, it's only about a minute long video, but we included it into the into the video here to kind of show you the direction we're going. Uh, mine is not going to be at that level, but I'm going to try to do what I can do with it as we go. All right. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks.